I'm uh, Jerry McKinney. I'm a curator in the Aeronautics Division of the National Air and Space Museum. I'd like to welcome you to another installment of Ask an Expert. We're going to have a brief uh, talk about the new Pioneers of Flight exhibition up on the second floor. So we'll go up the escalator here, but we're going up to the gallery. It's up in this walkway right above us. So I'll meet you guys up there. Well, thank you for uh, joining me up here on the second floor in Gallery uh, 208, uh, the Pioneers of Flight exhibition. Um, for those of you who have been to the museum over the years, you've recognized this gallery and the aircraft in it. It's been here since the opening of the museum in 1976. And since then, it's been a place where, in a complimentary fashion with our milestones of flight galleries, sort of the greatest hits of the museum, we also had these aircraft that talk about pioneering flights, whether it be distance, altitude, or speed primarily, but also other themes that I'll explore a little bit today. And through the generous um, donation of the Baron Hilton Foundation, the, the endowment that we were given, I guess about four or five years ago now, uh, we were able to take that funding and reinterpret this gallery, the theme of pioneers and flight. And since the majority of the artifacts in this gallery range from the early flight era of uh, John uh, Calvert Perry Rogers, Vin Fizz, as you see above, above you there in the walkway, uh, to World War II with the story of the Tuskegee Airmen, we have a lot of themes over three to four decades that we're trying to tell in this theme of pioneering. And many people have asked, since we've reevaluated and reinterpreted this gallery, what is this, what's this idea about pioneers? It's a, it's, a, it's a term that's taken for granted, especially in the history of flight and the interpretation of the history of flight. But it's also a, a phrase that is used by contemporaries to define the progress, the excitement of technology, especially in the 1920s and 30s. And so and a lot of times if you read newspapers, especially editorial cartoons, you'll see an image of an aircraft like this Fokker T2, which is this is the first aircraft to fly across the transcontinental United States, about 26 hours in the spring of 1923. You'll see that in the drawing, but then also you'll see the pioneers crossing the United States, the West, and their Conestoga wagons. So not only is a culture of American aviation, especially in the grand expanses of the American continent, but also in this theme of technology, pioneering technology, the culture of aviation in the 20s and 30s was very much a pioneering culture and identified with that heroic past for the United States. And so even with looking at editorial cartoons, newspapers, books, uh, uh, popular articles, we have a film loop. And if right here at the Pioneers of Flight Pylon, we have selections of film that only document this idea of pioneering in aviation as well as space flight. But this idea that it's very much the, the media culture, uh, the radio, the uh, movie camera, the film, the cinema house, that all grows up with the airplane in the 20s and 30s, so we're trying to document that as well. And so we're at the first phase of reinterpreting this gallery. Uh, it opened, I guess, two weeks ago now. And November uh, 19th, the, I guess the third week of November, is our full opening. So only half the gallery is open now. You can see the barriers there. So we've got a lot more to come. So in terms of the story now, though, we have a gallery that tells two major themes, uh, civilian and military. I curate the interwar military, the 1920s and 30s military aircraft collection, so I was intimately involved in this military side. Uh, the Fokker T2 was a military transport, the Douglas World Cruiser, the first to fly around the world, one of two airplanes in 1924, Jimmy uh, Doolittle's famous black little racer, the Curtis R3C. Those are all military airplanes. But what's unique about them, especially from the vantage point of the 1920s and 30s, is that they don't carry guns, they don't carry bombs. So the mission of the American military was to actually promote military aviation, the technology, the role of the military in the defense establishment, but also to promote aviation in general, because there's all this enthusiasm. So if you read the label text, you stop, you look at the panels, you'll see a phrase called air-minded. And that was a contemporary term in which individuals believed that to be air-minded meant that you believed in the promise of flight, the promise of technology. And in our civilian side of the gallery, in which you see aircraft from the, you know, there's Amelia Hart's Red Vega, there's the Lindbergh's, King Masartok the Sirius. Those aircraft uh, promise to show the public at that time the belief in technology and bring about a better humankind through that technology. And so the, the symbolism of these 
individuals in this gallery, I mean, these are famous people, the Lindberghs, Ann and Charles, Amelia Earhart, Jimmy Doolittle, especially, but also collective groups like the Tuskegee Airmen. They all are well known. We all, they're household names today, especially for people who follow aerospace history, but they're also seen as a way to understanding this idea of pioneering, not only in technology, but also in the cultural implications of flight in the first half of the 20th century. And so military civilian, we have dedicated units on the African-American experience, our black wings over here on the far side. We also have a significant unit on uh, the history of rocketry, pioneering rocketry, uh, which was developed in part with our space history division at the museum. So we have a lot of great introductory uh, stories in terms of a technology that hasn't taken off, so to speak, in terms of rocketry and space flight. But also we have technologies like the airplane, which are on that first major plateau, in which the, the way that aviation was the understanding today, we're really seeing the implications of that in the 20s and 30s. So this gala really covers a lot of different themes in that way. Other things that we tried to do with this gallery and was one of the prerogatives of the Hilton uh, Foundation and endowment was reaching out to youth, especially young, young kids. And so we've been working closely with our education division and they've been working hard and making ways of making this history accessible to younger generations and younger audiences. And that goes without saying that if you were air-minded in the 20s and 30s, that meant that if you were a kid, you were actively involved in following aviation, aim in space, building models, going to watching aviation or uh, space-related films, and just actively engaging in that. So we have a, we have a small unit of what's called air-minded youth. And one of the really neat things about that aspect of the gallery is we're able to reinterpret artifacts that we collected decades ago in a new way. We actually have models that were built in the 1930s by teenagers in model contests um, sponsored by the Smithsonian, boys clubs, girls clubs, and judged by one of our legacy curators, Paul Garber. We have those models that were collected by Paul Garber because they were great models of contemporary aircraft, including military and air racing aircraft. But, but now we see them as expressions of that enthusiasm for aviation. And they're the actual physical manif manifestation of that. And so we like to think that we're looking at models in that regard in a new way and, and understanding the culture that created them. And so, it, and we're going beyond airplanes in that way too, that we have these great personalities, these great celebrity, these great airplanes, the big hardware that we all like to see, but we're seeing what everyday people, how they express their enthusiasm and excitement for flight. And so there's a lot of things going on in this gallery that we were able to just put into this in a new and exciting way. So. Hopefully, if, for those of you who haven't visited this gallery yet, well, I hope you'll enjoy visiting it and discovering all the new things that we've included in it. And I'll just uh, stop right there and see if anyone has any particular questions about the gallery. Thank you for listening to this edition of Ask an Expert. A companion question and answer session for this lecture may also be available. For a schedule of upcoming Ask an Expert lectures at the museum, please visit www.nasm.si.edu.